I want to give start this way by saying that uh, uh, how many of us are dreamers here? God has given a dream in your heart. You, you know that there's something that God has placed in you that's supernatural that you didn't come up with. And God put it there. And I believe God has a simple word to, to share with each one of us to be able to rekindle something with a dream that didn't come from us, that God put it there. Can we just say together, God put it there. Okay, and it's still there because he's the one who placed it, and he's the one who he is orchestrating behind the scenes and wants to rekindle and reignite the dream that he's placed in all of us. But uh, let me just share that last week I shared some thoughts that were out of uh, 1 Kings 18, which I believe is a prophetic picture of where we are today. And by the way, every day that I wake up, I feel like we're living biblical prophecy. You know, we're living in a day where we need to have some clue what the Bible says about the prophetic times we're in, or I, for one, would go nuts. I mean, there, there is insanity going on in the world around us that if somebody had said 10 years ago, here's what's going to be happening in 10 years, I go, there ain't no way. There's no way that can happen. So I need to be able to face each day with saying, I've read the book. I know where this is headed. We serve a good God who always orchestrates his sovereignty, his goodness, his love, his salvation, even for those who don't are looking for him, who don't want him. God is a God of salvation. I'm, I'm not preaching universal salvation here. I'm saying God loves even those who are resisting him right now. And he wants... To, I believe we're living in a day when you say the profound or deep darkness covers the earth. Would you say, would you agree with me out of Isaiah 60? First uh, Timothy 3, 1, that perilous times will come. I believe here we are. So I can't, I, I wake up every morning and I say, Lord, I need a prophetic template to be able to see the hope and the challenge and the triumph of the day that we're in. Amen? So to that, to that extent, you know, we usually, in what we speak, uh, whether it's me speaking or Lynn or... David Vester or whoever it is, we try to have a real balance of message that we want to bring because we, we don't want to be, you know, when you see a plane fly, you don't see a whole lot of planes flying like this, do you? Or like this. They, how are they fly, flying? They're flying, you know, typically they're flying balanced. Well, we want to have two wings and fly balanced. So we want to very regularly have, have messages that are just based on the logos, the universal word of God that's true for everybody and every culture and every situation and every era in history it's true for everybody all the time amen okay we also want to have uh, uh, messages from time to time that are rhema context specific how do they relate to where i live right now and which one of those two options is god interested in both he wants to fortify us in both of those those that truth that's always true i mean it can take great comfort and satisfaction that the truths of the Bible that we're living right now are the same ones that Paul and the early church had to challenge with. The same ones that Old Testament believers realized they, that God was their rock. He could, they could rely on Him in every circumstance. But God also speaks into our specific context, whether it's a house that needs to sell or the day that we're living in because God knows He's appointed the days we're supposed to live in and here we are. And I'm glad we're living in exciting times where, you know, if you, if you read the story of Jesus in his last few days and hours, you realize there was times there where prophecy was being fulfilled by the hour and sometime by the minute. You can't, you can't read the, the two or three chapters about Jesus' resurrection with, you know, there's like 12 or so prophecies that were filled like in a matter of hours. Because there's like an acceleration of what God was doing in history. I believe we're in something very analogous right now. I believe we are seeing an acceleration of God fulfilling a bunch of prophetic things that are in the, in the Bible for, for our day. And we want to be able to have, to be able to have a, a picture, you know, to be solid in the Word that's true for everybody all the time and also to be able to recognize, God, what are you doing prophetically in our day right now? Amen? So... You know, along those lines, I want to share, here's a very familiar uh, scripture out of Second Chronicles 2020. I'll have the address here, 2020. God wants us to be able to see clearly, okay? I just want to give a quick insight of something that I never really thought about before. This is a familiar verse. Believe in the prophets, I'm sorry, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Let me just take a step back. Most of us know the context here. here this is when... King Jehoshaphat found out that there, weren't one, there wasn't one army coming against them. How many armies were coming against the whole nation? There was three armies. I mean, 
without God's intervention, they were toast. I believe in our day without God's intervention, but we will see God's intervention. And God is preparing us for such a time as this. Be people who realize it doesn't matter what it looks like out there. We serve a God who is in the middle of history and He is, he is building us up to be His people. He can be salt and light and joy and goodness and freedom for such a time like this. And not only for us and for our family, but so we can show other people. Let me tell you about our God. He is really good. So, so in the context of Jehoshaphat, you know, realizing he has, he has to come up with a way to, to, to seek the Lord and find a to plan to overcome not this one army, but three. We're told this right here, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. How many of us know if we believe in the Lord God, we will be established? You know, I want to proclaim this morning, I believe in the Lord my God and I will be established and everybody's associated. We will be established because we know the Lord our God. And that's just fundamental. God is God, whether I am hearing what He's speaking into my circumstances. He is God, and that's we can rely on that. And I love this. Here's what the word established means. It means in Hebrew to be firm, permanent. God is doing something permanent and firm in each one of us because we believe in the Lord our God. Period. End of story. Okay? And we want, one of the ways we can do that is know the Bible the best we can because it's God's Word that's applicable to everything okay but we know that this this particular verse goes on and it not only talks about the establishment that comes from believing in the lord your god can we just say i believe in the lord my god can we proclaim that together i believe in the lord my god and i will be established i am being established and will be established and you will and we will here's the way the rest of that verse goes believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Now, this word prosper has nothing to do with money. Nothing to do with finances. You know, God wants to make sure we're financially solvent and, you know, doing well and can pay our bills and have enough to give to others. You know? Uh, but this has nothing to do with finances. But it also talks about a dynamic. There's the first dynamic, just I believe in God, period, end of story. That's all I need. I will be firm and solid and permanent and established because I know my God. But there's also the rest of this talks about another whole different dynamic that God wants to bring into your life and mind. Believe in the prophets and you will prosper. Now, the prophets are people who can be speaking into our current circumstances. And you know who the, the main person who wants to be speaking into your current circumstances is? It's you. The main person that God wants speaking into, my, into Kay and our personal circumstances it's us but if god wants to bring some encouragement to somebody else that's biblically motivated and solid the lord we believe that that's a dynamic that you have in our day amen okay so we want both we don't we want we need both of these dynamics or god wants both of these dynamics working in our life but believe the his prophets and you shall prosper okay we do it God's way, and there's shalls. I love the shalls of Scripture. It's going to happen. And the word prosper here, again, means nothing to do with money. It means being to push forward to break out. How many of us want to break out and break forward? I do. And I believe that's, one of the, that's the encouragement God wants to bring over us today. God has a breaking forward, a pushing forward, a breaking out, a moving beyond things that might have constrained us before now. And God wants to bring a resurgence opening up things that we couldn't open ourselves. You know, we may again pray that for Stephen. When I felt like we were supposed to stay, pray that for Stephen, I know in me, I'm going, yes, Lord, me too. I, we want those things that break us out and help us to move forward. So, now, this, not only having the universal just establishing in God and having, but also having this prophetic dynamic Save the nation that day. Instead of being wiped out by three armies, what happened? They heard the word of the Lord with some very unusual battle tactic. Send the choir out there, and we're going to sing, Oh, praise the Lord for His goodness lives forever. And what happened? God won that day. The armies 
got destroyed because they found what God was speaking into their situation. And you know what I believe? No matter how counterintuitive it is, God is speaking into your situation and mine. He will show us what to do. I want to know the Logos Word of God. I, want to know, I'm, I, pray, I really believe God is opening up my ability and giving me the encouragement. Instead of saying, you know, I'm older, I can't memorize Scripture, I believe there's something in me that has a, more of a hunger just to memorize portions of God's Word because it's true for everybody all the time. And I also want to have my ear being able to be sensitive to being able to hear from God and to be us, to, us to be able to hear and encourage each other more than ever because we need both. But, and so in Second Chronicles 20, there's a dynamic here that saved the nation. We believe God can save nations. And I don't mean, when I say that, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about cultures that predominantly are built on a biblical worldview want to serve God, want to serve each other. That's when I say, but God can transform nations. I mean, how would you, how, how would you like to live like there are places in Book of Acts, it's like Philip went to this city and the whole city got saved. Can God do that? God is interested in bringing transformation of nations, okay? But also, I thank God that he has a plan for you and me. You know, here's just showing prophetically that there's encouragement. Paul saying, Timothy, don't get intimidated. Don't, don't back up at all. But remember the prophecy that you were given by the laying on of hands at church and let that let you be strong in the middle of any, any con, you know, conflict or challenge that you face. So having this ability to recognize what God is speaking to you in the middle of your circumstances is important for nations. It's important for each one of us individually. Amen? So... Uh, and by the way, we know when it comes to, when it comes to hearing from God and, and trying to be prophetic and develop, I mean, it's, a, it's a lifelong pursuit to hear God's voice. And I remember the first prophecy I ever had was very simple. I am the good shepherd. Just five words just quoting directly out of the Bible. And God will take us on a step of getting little by little being able to hear his voice better for ourself and also being able to give encouragements to others just step by step and there's a whole you know god will lead us through that but we know as as paul reminded us in the first corinthians that we what the lord gives us is part and it's partial so we recognize that and but we despite that we want and by the way because it's partial because god may give a tiny me a tiny sliver of the of the picture like one one piece of the puzzle. But I want to be faithful to give that piece of the puzzle because he may have the adjoining piece that he gives to Stephen and we put our two pieces together and then somebody else and we put the pieces together because we God gives us part and we need each other and that's the way these gifts are intended to work, to, to put the pieces together. And uh, here's, here's another verse that I want to bring up that just shows that I think this whole thing of being a develop a, I'll just call it a prophetic sensitivity where we're living in our day, is let's just look at what, what uh, Peter says in Acts chapter 2. This is from the book of Joel. And you remember, this is on the day of Pentecost where all of a sudden there's this avalanche of the Holy Spirit that gets poured out. There's tongues of fire on everybody's head. There's a sound like a rushing mighty wind. And also something that had never happened before in the history of the entire Bible is all this group of people began speaking in another language that they hadn't been taught, but it was given supernaturally to them by the Lord. Okay? And Peter, as, uh, you know, when people said, are these people drunk? What's going on here? And they were responding to uh, what was going on there with this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Peter stood up and he says, I can tell you what this is. And let's just let something here soak in from what the Lord inspired Peter to say that day as he was quoting verbatim from Joel chapter 2. He says, It shall come to pass in the last days. And I think we would all agree that we're living in, in that era of history. It says, God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men servants and on my maid servants, 
I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. Sounds like pretty exciting days and I believe we're it's almost the key. That's that's where we are right now. Now it's just to underscore here's two of these phrases here where God makes his promise. I will pour out my flesh on who? Everybody. I believe we're here. Our job as a church is to is for us all to be equipped, including me. Lord, equip each one of us to be able to go out there and represent Jesus wherever we go this week, next week. But He will pour out His Spirit on all flesh, and I will pour out My Spirit in those days, and I believe that those days are now. Those days are these days. And one of, so we know we're in the last days. We, we believe that. We believe that God wants to pour out His Spirit on everybody. And one of the ways that's going to happen is what's, going to, what's a characteristic of how God will move in those days? Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Am I reading the Bible? Your men servants and your maid servants shall what? Shall prophesy. God wants to, He wants us to be immersed in God's Word. And I encourage you to, whatever you're doing in your regular Bible reading, just take it one more step. Make, make it that much more systematic and you'll find the joy, you know, you'll rediscover the joy of just being immersed in God's Word. But God on that foundation, wants to be able to pour out His Spirit in the last days. And one of the things that people do is be able to say, is be able to pass on words of encouragement because they know God has given it to them, okay? For them, for their family, for their friends, for the church. And the, over, the underlying reason to do this is not so that we can look spiritual or whatever, is what? So we can know Him better. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me. Amen. I want to share a few verses out of Ezekiel 37 this morning, which underscores this. God wants us to know Him better. And when He speaks to us, that's ultimately what He wants. He wants each one of us to know Him better. He wants to use each one of us to bring encouragement to other people and all that to live fulfilled, triumphant lives, but He wants to know you and me better. Amen? So let's go to, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this. As I'm, start, I'm going to share the, some more thoughts out of a, another chapter in Ezekiel next week, but I'm going to talk about two dynamics of prophecy, and this is part one that I want to share, just some thoughts out of Ezekiel chapter 37. We might know this as the dry bones chapter. <laughs> How many of us sometimes feel like, Lord, that's me. I feel like my bones are kind of dry. Okay? God has some very encouraging words to speak to you and me this morning. And I want to read these verses, and we're going to make just a couple comments about that. But... Uh, Here we go. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then He caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, You know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and you will bring flesh and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, and there was no, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slains, that they may 
lived. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. God has big things in mind in our day. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your grace. How many would like to come up out of anything that needs resurgence in our life? I will put my spirit on you and you shall live and I will place you in your land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have performed it, says the Lord. Now, it may be that another day soon that we go through those. There's, there's a rich, fertile way of going through the whole process of learning how to hear from God and communicate it better. We'll say that for another day. But it's a rich chapter of how the progress, the whole process of saying, God, I want to learn how to hear from you and communicate it to others. But that's, that's thoughts from another day. For another day, here's what I want to do share today, and let's focus on this. We're going to focus on really one point out of these verses we've just looked at. And by the way, we can see here, this is summarizing just something about these verses just, we've just read, that God went through a process of revitalizing his people. You know, we live in a day right now where the enemy would just try to wear us down. How many of us have ever felt in the last two or three years just a little weary? Just worn out. It's just, it's just, it just seems to keep grinding. I think we could all say, I get it. At least I know I can. I, Lord, Knox, I need this. Would you keep talking? Because I need this. Because that's where we've been living for the last, particularly the last few years. And God wants to do a very powerful restoration and revitalizing in each one of us. I'm in, Lord. We're in. Bring it on, Lord. We, that's what we need. But here's the process. You know, God brings the bones together. Now, I'm sure we could prophetically could, you know, go through and say, well, what, what does that symbolically mean? But there's certainly a process. God brought these bones together, and then he put breath into them, and he also promised them what was to come. I'm going to bring you back into your land. I'm going to cause you to come up from everything that's been dead, dried up, burnt up. You know, we've got trees in our yard that are like burnt up. I hope I can keep them alive because it's been burnt up. You know, we're out there putting putting the uh, water under the you know the canopy of the trees like i hope Lord, you know let this tree come back to life and i think again we can relate to that god bring things that have just been kind of toast god says i'm all about that let's talk about that so and if god says he's going to cause you to return and bring you into the land if god's going to cause it you know we can say it's going to happen God, when God says he's going to cause something to bring us back into our land, I think it's a picture of our destiny. How many of us want to go into the land, into the dreams that God has placed into our heart? I believe the Lord says, I'm going to bring the bones together. I'm going to bring re reinvigorate breath, and it's your breath that gives us life, that we, like we sang this morning. And he will cause us to come up out of everything that's been burnt, everything that's been dry it out, and he will bring us into the land of Israel. And here's the reason for it. I think it's, I love the, the beautiful, I, I've used the phrase, the redundant, the beautiful redundancy of Scripture a number of times. There is, there is a phrase that's used, I think, 47 times in the whole Bible. And it's used 38 times in Ezekiel, and it's used four times in this chapter. You... And the Lord says, why am I doing this? So you will know that I am the Lord. Wow. That's what God wants to do this morning is to encourage us again that He knows that there's things that have been kind of fried, worn out, and that the enemy, we're living in a day when the enemy would try to wear us down. And God says, I'm going to bring life back into the bones. I'm going to bring breath back 
And by the way, that word breath in Hebrew means ruach, it's spirit. God wants to revitalize His Spirit coming out of each one of us so that we can say what He wants us to say and do what He wants us to do because God is the one who is the restorer. And, but it's not so much that we can have our, the dreams that God is placing us, you know, fulfilled and revitalized. And here's the real goal. God wants you and me to know Him better. And I love, the, the, again, the beautiful redundancy of Scripture. Four times in this chapter, God says, and this is, what, this is what it's all about. I want you to know me better. God, what's, Lord, it doesn't get any better than that. We want more of you. So, you know, here's the point that I want to focus on this morning. Well, that's really the point. God wants to know us in better. So we can be... You know, when God starts, uh, when God starts speaking to us, we can say, "Lord, do it." Okay. Let's just take a look briefly at here's when the Lord spoke to these bones. He says, Here, "Let's see what their response was." Okay. And the Lord said to me, "Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, and what what did the bones say?" Our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cast off. You know what I want to say when God starts reviving me? Oh, Lord, do it. Okay? Here's what these phrases mean. Our bones are dry. That means in Hebrew to be ashamed, confused, or disappointed. You know what God wants to take out of us? Every, anything that's in us that, that, that identifies with this. And so, Lord... We believe that there's any dry bones in us, you're going to take that away. Anything, any way that these days have kind of been overwhelming, you're going to take that away from us. Amen? Let's flick to the next phrase. Our hope is lost. That word lost means to wander away. God's, going to, God's not going to let us wander away. God's going to let us be right in the center of what He's doing. We ourselves are cut off. And, you know, that... Uh, uh, these, these words here, this word here means to exclude. You know, if there's any way we feel like we're excluded or left out, God wants to bring that back. God wants to restore those things. So we, you know, here's, you know, here was the three responses that Israel had. And we want to say, we want to say, Lord, take any of that out of us. When God comes to restore us and breathe life in us, what do we say? Lord, we're, we're in. That's what we want. Bring, bring that to us. Now, uh, I want to uh, uh, I, I want to bring this to just bring in an account here of the uh, there's a woman a Shunammite woman who is in Second Kings chapter four and this is when Elisha uh, Elisha came to uh, this lady and her her husband regularly and they they decided they want to do something very special for the prophet. They, they prepared a, house, a room for him and he could come and he could eat there and he'd stay there every time. They recognized the value of having a prophetic voice there. So they made room for him. And uh, in, this, in the story here, they, uh, uh, Elisha said, well, what can, we do? what can we do for you? And the lady said, well, there's nothing I really need. But the, the Lord knew that she had a dream that was not fulfilled. So even though she said, I don't need anything, Here's what Elisha said to her. He says, you're going to have, he knew her desire for a child. And said, about a year from now, you're going to have a baby. God is going to fulfill your dream. How many of us have planted a dream in us that hadn't been fulfilled yet? That baby hasn't been born yet. That baby hasn't been realized yet. Well, here is uh, kind of like we just looked at in uh, that verse in Ezekiel 37 a, mi a minute ago where uh, uh, they were kind of struggling with receiving what God had said. Here's what this lady says. She says, uh, The word of the Lord came to Elisha saying, Next year at this time you'll be holding a son in your arms. Let's believe what God's going to give us. He's going to place the vision in our hand. We're going to hold it in our arms. He's going to fulfill what He's spoken to us. But what was her first? What was her first response? Oh, don't, don't deceive me. Don't get my hopes up. 
But you know what happened? Sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant. And at that time, the, fo- and about that, at that time, the following year, she had a son just as Elisha had said. So God fulfilled. I just believe what God wants to do this morning is to rekindle the dreams, the life, the vision that He's put into each one of us. God wants to rekindle that. And where there's any dry bones, God wants to say they will live. Where there's anything that's lost breath, God wants to revitalize and bring that, let, bring that breath back. So he can take us, you know, out of where we are to take us. It says he, he, he's going to bring up Israel so they can go into their land. We could go into our destiny. And, but the main thing that God wants to, the main reason why God wants to do that is so we can know. We can all say, we, will, we know that you are the Lord. So can we, can we, can anybody identify with, the need for God just to restore dreams. I would like us to, let's just turn this into a prayer for a couple minutes. Father, we just know that you have placed your dreams, God, in in each one of us, Father. And Father, we thank you for those dreams, God, that you've placed in us. And God, no matter what kind of seeming delays our difficulties, God, that we might have faced, Father. God, we believe that You're the one who put those dreams in us. And Father, we just embrace the process, but we want to hear from You. Father, we just pray that You would go and You would begin to restore the bones, the strength, the vitality that we can just stand upon. Father, we just thank You, Lord, that You're also going to just breathe new life, God, into every dream, every plan, God, that You've placed in us for, for our families, for everything that's part of our lives, Father. And Father, we just pray that You just breathe that new life. God, just restore those visions, Father. And God, no matter what would come across, come against us in these days, that would be a challenge and be... God, that you're bigger than that, Father. And we just thank you, God, that you are bringing each one of us into our Israel, into our destiny, into the plan that you have for us, Father. Father, we just thank you for that life and that restoration. And God, we thank you that the the main reason for all of this, God, God, and we embrace that and we love that is so that we can know you better. God, we thank you for the joy that this will bring for the ability to let this life spill over into the people around us. But God, what we want more than anything else is to know You better. So Father, we just say, when you ask the question, can these bones live? Our answer is absolutely, because this is what You do. Father, we thank You for it. God, let Your kingdom come with Your joy and triumph and all that we do, Father. God, in Jesus' name, Amen.